So without further ado, I'm pleased to introduce our first speaker, who's Lord Devon, Chair of the Committee of Climate Change. Well, thank you very much. And uh, I very much welcome the opportunity of, uh, of speaking at this very important conference. The truth is that climate change is the biggest physical threat to our society that we have. It doesn't have a vaccine. It's something that we have allowed to get out of all control. And therefore we don't have any kind of control on our timing. So when people say to me, wouldn't it be easier if we took a little longer over the battle to reach net zero? I have to say the timing isn't in our hands. Uh, we have by 2050 to do what the law now says we will do, which is to reduce our emissions uh, to net zero. And that's a very, very tough task. But it is not in any way impossible, as Jen has just uh, said so clearly. It isn't at all impossible, but it will need very, very considerable concentration and very, very considerably harder work than we've done up to now. I want to make that distinction very clear. There are those who want us to promise to do net zero by 2030. You can't do that. The transition does take time because of how far down the road towards seriously damaging our planet we have gone. But we don't have any more time than the absolute necessity. And that's why we have to get on with it. If my criticism of government uh, is uh, sometimes sharp, it's centered around that one thing, which is that we have not done what we ought to have done quickly enough. And therefore what we have to do now has to be done more quickly and in a greater difficulty than if only we had started earlier, as many of us have been pressing for years. But we do have a government, uh, both in uh, Westminster and in Edinburgh uh, and uh, elsewhere in the uh, United Kingdom. We do have governments that are committed now to solve these problems. And I think it is very important to point to the uh, remarkable opportunity that we have which is that uh, this year we host COP26, we host it in Scotland, and we are able therefore to dramatize what can be done because we're also going to have to dramatize what has to be done. It's COP26's job to move forward from the absolutely iconic occasion of Paris five years ago. Because in Paris, we really did change the world. The first time that every nation on earth signed up to fight to keep something which we desperately need to keep, which is the stability of our planet. Oh, we've signed up of different groups for all kinds of associations through the years. But this is the first universal decision that we need to keep something together because it's a global issue and we have to have a global answer. And the global answer is that we have to keep the rising temperature below two degrees and fight to get it down to 1.5. Of course, that already makes a huge amount of difference. It's already more difficult because we're not arguing this fighting for these changes for the next generation. We're doing it for ourselves because climate change is already having a huge effect upon the world in which we live. And as I look out over four inches of snow here in Suffolk, remind myself of just how different the climate has become in this country during my lifetime. Spring comes very much earlier. Indeed, it, it comes 17 days earlier from what it was when I first started to work. And uh, that's only one sign. The additional and uh, increasing number of extreme events, the way in which all over the world 
people are finding it more difficult to live because the climate upon which they rely has changed so much. So what we have to do is to crank up our expectations and our commitments. That's what's going to happen in uh, COP26. And we're very fortunate because there have been significant changes which makes it possible to believe that we really can achieve in COP26 what we need to. The election of Joe Biden means that America has rejoined the world and that we can expect from America the same support for uh, net zero uh, as we are having throughout the industrialized world. And remember, we also have from China, 10 years later than the rest, and I hope we'll be able to bring her to 2050, but still she is seeking to do precisely what the rest of us are doing because even China, with all the protection she has from reality, which any totalitarian regime has, even China has understood very, very clearly just what a threat climate change can be. And into that, biotechnology has an enormous role to play. Uh, we are going to have to uh, reuse and recycle, but we are also going to have to recognize that there will be residues which will need to be used again. Biotechnology is crucial to that. Biotechnology will have some real role to play in the new processes which we will need in order to get to net zero. CCS, carbon capture, storage and usage, depends very significantly on the work of biotechnology. Uh, electricity, hydrogen, industrial heat and jet fuel, all these are going to look to the work that is being done and is being done in this country uh, to uh, ensure that we have the tools to begin to live in a more sensible way. And I very much appreciate the fact that you have chosen the issue of climate as to be the theme of your conference, because we're going to look to those in the biotechnology industry very uh, directly to give us some of the tools which we need to win this battle. It is very dangerous uh, to rely too much on technological innovation. Dangerous because politicians in particular uh, tend to long for a silver bullet. If only we had hydrogen, if only we could do things in this or that way. Well, hydrogen may well be a very important component of our future. Biotechnology in the much wider sense, I'm sure will be a very important um, contributor. But in the meantime, we have to do a lot of other things. Hoping for technological change is no substitute for making the vast number of changes we need to make in the way we live in order to be able to live safely in the planet which we didn't create, but which has been given to us. So I'm very clear in the role I think you all have. It is a role within the context of a society which bends all efforts to ensure that we lead the world and ensure that the world comes too because this global problem can only be solved by us all together. And the tools which you will help to create and give, although they are not silver bullets, they are the means of making possible and financially possible what might otherwise appear to be impossible. And that's why I would end with what Jen said herself. We are fighting coronavirus and in a single short year we created a whole range of means by which we could vaccinate people. No one really believed that we could do it as quickly as that. 
doesn't mean to say that we don't have to take an awful lot of other methods and uh, do a great deal else as well to fight this battle. With climate change, there is no vaccine, but there are very many things which we can do to hasten along that path to net zero. And biotechnology will play a major part in the changes we have to make.